Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Lift your hand and thank God for a blessed time in his presence. Thank him for the last Sunday of the year. God has blessed you to see the last Sunday of the year. There are many people who didn't get to the end of this year. But God has blessed you. And he's going to give you great keys and great wisdom that is going to help you for the coming year. And as you've come to the presence of the Lord, God is going to increase your strength. He's going to bless you and anoint you. Father, thank you for your power that is released into our lives, for your healing. Thank you for your word, which we have hidden in our hearts. Help us to hide more and more of your word in our hearts, that we may grow up to serve you in the right way. We love you, Jesus. 
we praise you. We wouldn't have come to church today if it had not been for your grace and your mercy. We would have been unbelievers. We wouldn't even believe in you, Lord. Oh, Father, but through your mercy we are here. Lifting up holy hands and thanking you for your great mercy that you have shown to us in the whole year. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and give the Lord a shout and a clap offering. Hallelujah. Now, today I'm going to share with you the most powerful message that you need for the year 2010. You don't need anything else apart from what I'm going to tell you. This message embodies all the secrets and all the blessings that you need to carry you through 2010 into 2011 and beyond. Can I have an amen from somebody who believes what I'm saying? All right. And this message is entitled, Quiet Time. Quiet Time. Hallelujah. Quiet Time. I need those quiet times. Quiet time. Now listen. Listen. This is a book that everybody should get. So I want to, it's called a must get. Tell somebody, it's a must get book. I want you to have it and I want you to read it slowly. This is one of the most concentrated books with great revelation on every line. It is calculated to give you impartations of blessings. For every few paragraphs you are able to imbibe. By the spirit of osmosis and other spirits, you are going to receive superior blessings that will give you the upper hand in every situation of your life. God will bless you as you study this book. I'm not going to give it to you free. I've already given you two gifts and you haven't even given me any. Uh, I think I have about four or five hampers in my house. Only four or five people have given me gifts. So... I have given all of you, thousands of you, gifts. You get it? So I'm not going to give this one to you as well. I want you to buy it. Tell your neighbor, you've got to spend some money on the word of God. Sing it, I love it. Quiet times. It's those quiet times. Quiet times. Mm. They are so Precious to me, so to precious. Me. That's when you tell me all those secret things. I know that you want me to be. It's those quiet times, quiet times, alone together, just you. Just you and me, my Lord. That's when I tell you, Lord, I love you. And you remind me that you love me too. Together there and nothing that we can't do. No, they can't take them away from me, oh. They seem to disappear Just because you are with me It's those quiet times Quiet times How many want to have more quiet times? They put that sparkle back in my eye mm. That's when I tell you
take them away from me. Hallelujah. Today I want to share with you three strategies for a successful quiet time. Many of us don't have successful quiet time because we don't know these three strategies. And they are found in chapter three. Number one, set a practical, unchangeable, and regular time for you, your quiet time. Moses did that in Exodus 34. The Bible says, and be ready in the morning and come up in the morning upon Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mounts, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. Amen. So the first step is to set a practical, unchangeable, and regular time for your quiet time. Now, this is the one thing that many people do not do. Well, and you need to learn how to set a time which never changes for the time that you're going to have with God. Whenever we put a patient on oral contraceptives, you know what oral contraceptives are? A pill that you take to prevent pregnancy, but you have to take it every day. The reason why you have to take it every day is because when you take it today, the blood level will go up like this, and then it starts coming down by the next day. Then you take the, 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 the pill again at the same time the next day. Then it, it goes up again. So it's always like this at this height. So you need to take it at the same time all the time. Now, if you take it, your pills, all right, please, this applies to married people. Tell your neighbor, if you are not married, contraceptive does not apply to you if you are not married. Why are you listening so closely when you are not a married person? All right. Now, if you, take, if you take a pill and then you don't take it, you don't take it, um, then the, the level goes down and then your body gives out an egg because it's the, that level is keeping your, uh, the level of the hormones such that your, your ovary don't release an egg. Do you understand? So as soon as it comes down, maybe you forgot to take it on Tuesday or on Wednesday, the level comes down and then... The, the body says, oh, it's time to give out one egg. Oh. Then later you say, I was taking the pill, but it didn't work. Yes, because you didn't take on Tuesday, you didn't take on when. Now, the reason why some people are not able to take it regularly is because sometimes they take it in the morning, they take it in the afternoon, they take it, they put it in their bag, they take it in the evening, so it doesn't work regularly. Blood pressure medicine is like that as well. If you're taking medicine for blood pressure, okay, Never stop taking it. Never, never. Let me tell you, I can give you some good medical advice. Never stop taking it even for a day. Only your doctor can tell you that you, you, you can stop taking it. And usually you take it for life. That's why we take time before we diagnose people with high blood pressure. Because once you are diagnosed, it's for life. I know a pastor. I know of a pastor. He, he was, uh, I think, the father of Dwight Thompson. He was on a blood pressure medicine. He traveled somewhere to preach. He forgot his blood pressure medicine at home. So he was preaching with that. He had a stroke. For nine years, he was uh, paralyzed in a wheelchair before he died. So you, you must not stop taking it. You can't change the time you take it. That's why some people have stroke early in the morning because the blood pressure will be going up and they didn't take it. Are you, are you getting something that can help your life? Eh? All right, I'm teaching you something. Okay, now the reason why people are not able to take their medicine regularly when they have to take it is because they don't have the regular time always. Just like how when you get up, you bath, you brush your teeth. Or you didn't brush your teeth, you didn't bath. You bath, you brush your teeth. Uh -huh. So the same time, you add quiet time to it. That always in the morning, I don't do it in the afternoon, I don't do it in the evening, I do it at the same time. Medicine, quiet time, bathing, all important things, do them. Now, the reason why it's important to brush your teeth is because you cannot smell your own breath. Because you are used to it. So the fuses are always all, all, all around your nose. You are not able to determine. So somebody else will determine. So it's important for you to do it regularly. <laughs> you don't like my preaching. You don't want me to preach what I'm preaching about. I'm talking to you about doing something regularly. To save your life. So have your Bible reading regularly. At the same time. Always. 
No Bible, I'm not going out. If I've not had my Bible, I'm not going out. Is it clear? Ladies who love dressing with same color. She's got the same color in her hair, same color in the dress, and same color of bag. All of them have design. My wife has the same style. I was, when she was coming just now, I was just looking, same color. The hair is the same color, the shoes, the bag. The, the, wow, I said, wow, fantastic. Now, it is good that you do all that, but you also need, my wife prays. My wife prays, she prays in the night, she reads her Bible, she studies, she knows the word and so on. But unfortunately, some people dress, they just do all these dressing things, but there's nothing in them. What will be to you if you marry one of these empty-headed beauty queens? Hey! Who doesn't have their quiet time? You've got a big breast, but you don't have your quiet time. What can we do with your breast when you don't have your quiet time? I shouldn't say it. I will say it. Anyway, listen, I'm just giving you these three quick strategies. Now, number two, withdraw from the presence of other people. Okay? The Bible says in Exodus 34 verse 3, and no man shall come up with thee. Quiet time is you and God. Just you and me. Where is she? Just you and me together. Just you and me. Sing that part. It's those quiet times. Quiet times. Alone together. Alone. Just you and me. Just you and me. That's when I tell you, Lord, I love you. Do you get it? And you remind me that you love me too. Wow. Together there is nothing that we can't do. No, they can't take them away from me. Wow. They can't take them away from you. No matter what. If you are in a dormitory, they can't take them away from you. You have to fight to have it. I used to have my quiet time under my pillow. I used to lie that people thought I was sleeping, but I was having my quiet time. Read my Bible and I'll cover my head with my pillow and pray. Into the pillow. Because I was living in a dormitory in secondary school. And I, I, didn't, I didn't have any private place. But you can't take it away from me. You can't take can't it away. take them away from me. Oh no, 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 you can't. They can take them away from me. Okay, strategy number three create an atmosphere that is conducive for fellowship with God. GTV News is not conducive for fellowship with God. Listening to Joy FM as they are arguing about some politics is not conducive to having a quiet time with God. Some people listen to radio, uh, quiet uh, radio uh, politics before they even pray. They are listening to arguments between MPP and NDC instead of having quiet times. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to establish a conducive atmosphere. Good Christian music. We cannot use Bob Marley music and other uh, sinners, I mean other unbelievers music to create a quiet time. Some of the songs are charged with evil spirits. Amen. So how many are going to use these three strategies to develop and have your quiet time? Now, let's go to chapter one. Seven things that happen to you during your quiet time. Number one, during your quiet time, you develop the most important relationship of your life. The most important relationship of your life. The most important relationship of your life. The most important. Why? Because the relationships you have determine the things you will experience in your life. The relationships you have determine the things you will experience in your life. Amen. Who you relate with and the relationships you, you develop determine how your life will become. Because almost everything comes through relationships. There were so many people who were happy when Professor Mills became the president. Why? Because some of them had developed relationships with him 
when he was not so important, and when he was walking around doing door to door and house to house witnessing, not for Christ, for, for NDC. And, and I heard people even saying, ah, you see, it is good to support those who are down and out because when they also rise. So there are a lot of people were happy. Why? Because they know that the relationship you have with somebody, if you have a good relationship with an important person, it can determine a lot of good things for you. My dear Christian friend, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Do you think that the contracts to build the hospitals and to build the roads are given to the best contractor or the most quality road builder? They are given to the people they know. All, most of the speeches that you hear on television are all fake. Most of them are fake, fake speeches written by speechwriters. You watch, next time there's a speech being given, watch the person who is reading it. You realize that he does not know what is in the speech. And sometimes they fumble. And I was surprised. I remember when the President Kufu and Co. came on the first time they came, they, there were some mistakes in the first speeches that they made. And they blamed, they said it was the speechwriter who had written And I said, you are the one reading. So now that you've made a mistake, you want us to believe that you didn't write it, it was a speech writer. And then when you are saying something in the speech, you want us to believe that you, you are the one saying it. So which one should we take, the speech writer or you? There are people whose work in the castle is to write flowery speeches. When they say, you're going to inaugurate a dam, or you're going to inaugurate a water and sewage something, then they'll write speeches. When it's a medical thing, they'll write about the statistics. Everybody's, Yeah. With quotations from Shakespeare. Quotations from Shakespeare. Contracts are given to who they know. Who you know. Employment, job, but all the, even entry to university. They will say there is no way you can never come. In, in England, professor, this will come from this and that. All those, all of them is who you know. Relationships you have always determine where you can go. Now, the most important relationship you can ever have is your relationship with God. God is the most important person that you need to have a good relationship with. But I am sorry to say that many Christians do not have much of a relationship with God. How can it be that Jesus says one day he will say, I never knew you. I never knew you. I said, Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. Said, but I don't, I don't know you. But I don't know you. I don't know you. I said, I cast out devils. I did this. I did that. I did that. But I don't know you. How can that be? I sat in your church. What's your name? Your name is John. Maxwell. Matthew. Fred. You see, I don't know you. You sit in my chair, but I don't know you. Uh, your name is Francisca, Frederica, Oliver, Pascal. You see, I don't know you, but you, you can say, but I was in your church. I, I read your book, but, but I don't know you. So knowing somebody is different from having something to do with the person. One day, a pastor of mine, I didn't know him. My secretaries brought him in to see me. And when I came, I said, who are you? He said, my name is Lord. I said, Lord what? And he told me, Lord, whatever. I said, oh, that's an interesting name. I've never, I don't know anybody called Lord. Do you know anybody called Lord? Lord, Lord of Lords. And he said, oh, I'm your pastor at Kokrobite. I said, me? He said, yeah, Lighthouse Chapel International. I'm the pastor in Kokrobite. You ha we have even a building. I said, I don't know you. On that day, I learned a great lesson. You can work for somebody. You can even do things in the person's name. But one day the person will turn to you and say, look, but I don't know you. And I look at Lord and I say, but I don't know you. I don't know you. I said, but I, I was in light. I said, yeah, that's why I'm telling you to have your quietness so that you will not stand one day at the gates of heaven. And you say, ah, please, I was at the Kodesh. Uh, last weekend I came there. And, said, uh, and then the Lord will say, ah, uh, Take them to uh, everlasting darkness. What, Lord? He said, everlasting darkness. Hey, but Lord, I was at the Kodesh. I was on the Tema motorway. We were going somewhere when something happened. The three of us have come. We are all Kodesh members. He said, no, no. He said, the Lord said, but I don't know you. Well, what is your name? What's your name? 
Blessed. I don't know blessed. I think you are the first brother I've met who is called blessed. And your name is what? Samuel. I don't know you. When, when was the last time we talked? When was the last time we talked? We've never spoken before. Yeah, we've never spoken. You see, so God would, God would look at you and say, but we don't speak. We say, but when was the last? Oh, I attended. No, but when was the last time we spoke? You and I. I talked to you. When, when did we speak? Well, come. Uh, come, come. When, when did you speak to me? Never. Never, never, never. Except today, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you see, some of you, you come to church, but you don't speak to God. But God wants to walk with you. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be close to you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to come every morning. Huh? Every morning you come to him. Because God is alive. God is real. You are going to see him. We shall see him face to face. We shall see him face to face. We shall see him face to face. And crown him Lord of all. 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 But, but how do we say? We shall see him face to face. Face to face, I believe. Shall see face to face. When? You see, I don't know you. When did we talk? It's been a while. It's been a while. When was the last while? <laughs> you see, you can be around, but they don't know you. So, my dear friend, develop the most important relationship of all time of your life. God wants to work with you. He wants to talk with you. Amen. Yeah. Number two. The second important thing that is going to happen during your quiet time is that you are going to develop the most important personal habit of your life. More important than brushing your teeth. Jesus had his quiet time. Moses had a quiet time. Joshua had his quiet time. Number three. You are going to, during your quiet time, you draw near to God and he draws near to you. Draw me nearer, Lord, nearer into your word of truth. Draw me nearer, Lord, nearer into your love for me. Draw me nearer, Lord, nearer to the place where you are. Draw me nearer and nearer that I may know your heart. The people whom God is close to are the people who will draw near to him. Excuse me to say, an, an important person, he is close to the people who draw near to him. If you, excuse me to use myself as an example. I'm sorry because I don't believe, I don't think of myself as an important person. But even me, in my little world, I, I know the people who draw near to me. It's true. The people who come to me are the people I, I relate with. Because I don't know who to relate with. So those who, who draw near are the people that I relate with. That, that's just how it is. Who are the people Jesus related with? Were there people who needed miracles? A lot of people had problems, apart from the woman with the issue of blood. As she pressed through the crowd, she said, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. A lot of people needed miracles. But this woman, she pressed through the crowd. She said, I'm going to touch him. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to catch him. She came feeling dizzy, feeling dizzy, feeling dizzy. And she touched him. She touched him. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? There's one person here who is different from all the others. Not that she had more problems. Everybody has a problem. How many realize that you have a problem that you really like Jesus too? But you see, your Bishop Saki knows the people who draw near to him. Those are the people that you, you get to know. Zacchaeus. 
Jesus was passing by. He saw him up on a tree. I said, ah, look at somebody's climb up on a tree. Just to see me. Just to see me. Do you get it? Come down, Zacchaeus, come. I will, I will come to your house. You don't have to stand on a tree to see me. What? I mean, he was the, he was the one who was drawing near to Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm going to draw near to you. You see, action and reaction are equal and opposite. You draw that, I'll come to you. I will come to your house. I'll come inside your house. You see, blind Bartimaeus. A lot of blind people around. But as blind, Jesus was passing by. Blind Bartimaeus shouted, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That's, these are the people that Jesus attended to. Stopped and talked to. They were the people who drew near to him. Who forced their way through the crowd. And when you sit back, you are just one of the crowd. So, I'm giving you a key. Draw nigh, I will draw nigh. That's what Jesus said. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh. And God will draw nigh to you. It's not because your situation is so pathetic and so pitiful that God will draw nigh to you. No. It is because you draw nigh. Even if you have just a small problem, that drawing nigh is what causes the person to also draw nigh to you. So when you come and have your quiet time, every day you draw nigh to God. You come nearer and nearer and nearer to God. God shows you himself nearer and nearer. Every day you take a step closer and closer to God. Amen. Amen. And number four, quiet time makes you read the most important book of your life. Amen. The most important book in the whole world is the Bible. The Bible is, is it, when you have your quiet time, you read your Bible every day, you read the most important book. Of all the books in the world, the most important book is the Bible. Amen. Okay. Now, have you read books on anatomy? No. Physiology? No. Psychiatry? No. That's why you are not a doctor. Because the book you read determines who you become. The books you read determine what your life is going to come. Look, if you want to know about somebody, look at the books he's reading. Anytime I sit down in a plane and I'm sitting by a very intelligent person, the person looks to see what I'm reading. And when I sit by somebody, I always look to see what somebody is also reading. Because you can almost know the person by the book he's holding. It's true. You can see a person by the book he's holding. You can know. I can know you when I see the book you are holding in your hand and what you are reading. It's true. One day I met a, a great man of God and I was holding a book. In a bus, I was in Sweden. The first thing he did is stop. He took my book. Let me look. Then he looked at the book and said, oh, you are reading this. I said, okay. Then he went on. An old minister. Because an experienced man knows that the book you read determines who you are. Have you read books on gynecology? No, please. Pardon? What about obstetrics? No, please. Psychiatry? No, please. Internal medicine? No, please. Pediatrics? No, please. Orthopedics? No, please. That's why you are not a doctor. And that's why I am a doctor. Because I've read books on all these. The books you read determine who you are going to become. So when I see you reading the Bible, the Bible, I know you are going to be a very great person. Because you are reading the greatest book and the most important book of all time. And when you read it every day, I know you are going to be a very, very, very great person. Because you are reading the Bible. Don't, it's not the Bible to read for because you come to my church. For your life. The Bible is the most important book. Amen. So you can know somebody by what the person is reading. I have not read books on engineering accounting. That's why I'm not an accountant. I'm not an accountant because I, I haven't studied accounting books. Yeah. But I've, I've read books on church growth, on ministry, and on the work that I'm doing. A lot of books. A lot of different things. Amen. The book you read determines who you become. 
Amen. Number five. A quiet time is your personal school of the word. Amen. It's a personal sort of center for advice and personal training. You know, there was a time we used to have marriage counseling just one-to-one. Pastor and two people. But we became so many, now we started to have a, a, a class. So, the Bible says here, it says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear it. How be it, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. There is going to be a personal teaching of you. God is going to teach you personally things which nobody can tell you. You know sometimes when you tell somebody certain things, he doesn't listen. How many have told somebody something, he didn't mind you? Most of the time, people don't believe. You tell somebody with evidence and photograph, he will not believe. People don't accept things. One of the reasons why husbands and wives have a lot of conflict is because either the husband or the wife wants to turn into a personal Holy Ghost. Are you a personal Holy Ghost of your husband or a personal Holy Ghost of your wife? There are things you can never change the, unless, the, unless God himself changes the person. He will never, I, I don't want to swear by heaven and earth because I cannot swear. Unless God, the person will never change it. You see, you remember when our church walls were broken? You see, when somebody tells us, you get angry. But when God tells you, you, you are, when our walls were broken, somebody said, it is good for you that has had to humble you. To humble the lighthouse, they'll be humble. When I heard, I said, hey, whatever has happened to us, the same thing will happen to you times whatever. You will see pepper, you will see fire. But later on, the Holy Spirit was talking to me. He was also taking me through my personal school. From personally reading the Bible. And the Holy Ghost said to me, it is good that your walls were broken because it has humbled you. And I said, it's true, pa. But the first time when the person, I was returning the thing with curses. You say it's good for me, you will see pepper. I will put chili inside your eye. God will put chili inside your eyes. Look. Don't try to be a personal Holy Ghost to change. People cannot change except God changes them. But when you have your quiet time, anytime you see somebody having his quiet time, thank God, because he will change. Something will change about the person, I tell you. One day, the person will read in the Bible and say, this is what the word of God says. People who don't pay tithes, if they were to start having their quiet time, a time will come, you yourself will read in the Bible, you feel that it's a blessing for me to pay my tithes. It's not somebody who has to tell me, Pastor, you tell me that I should pay my tithe. Don't waste your time. I myself know that I have to present my tithe. I shouldn't eat my tithe. It's not somebody who has to tell me. I, God himself has told me. So, brothers and sisters, quiet time is your personal school. So, get a good Bible after church. Spend money on the word of God. Or do you spend your money on determines who you what you are going to become. Amen. Number six. During your quiet time, you increase your knowledge of the scriptures. And finally, during your quiet time, you experience the presence of the Lord. Wow. Experience the presence of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there are things that decrease or increase, depending on what it is. When you have your quiet time, you are in the presence of the Lord. You go to God and say, Father, I thank you for today, for an opportunity to, to, to fellowship with you and to relate with you. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. The Bible says if you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. Why don't you draw nigh to God? Let God draw nigh to you. When you pray like that, you see, once you are in the presence of God, the Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 11, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence... Is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is joy. Some of us are so depressive. Depressive characters. But in the presence of God, your happiness will now begin to come. How many have noticed that when you come to church, you are happy? After church, the sadness comes back. Who has experienced it before? Give me a wave. After church, you realize that the depression has re-descended. Huh? 
But in the presence of the Lord, there is joy, you are happy. So the presence of the Lord brings more joy. So every time you have your quiet time, you rise up with strength. Wow, one day I was in England and I was having my quiet time. I suddenly wanted to rush back to Ghana. I had some new strength from my quiet time with the Lord. I just wanted to burst out like a bullet. When you have your quiet time, you have more faith. That's when you believe that a fish can swallow a human being. It's when you are in the church, you believe a fish. But when you go to the seashore and you see, uh, what's the name of the big fish? Grouper. And any fish, you said, which fish can swallow a human being for him to be praying in the fish and kneeling down? Say, ah, I don't believe it. But in the presence of God, you believe that a fish can swallow a man. And that a chariot can come from heaven with fire. And the horses made of fire, not normal West African horses, but fire horses will come from heaven and carry somebody. That's why you believe. It's only in church that you believe such things. How many realize that when you are in the presence of God, you have more faith, more faith, more faith? Yes. Whenever you are in the presence of God, there's more. And when you are in the presence of God, you hate sin. That's when you dislike sin. How many have realized that when you come to church and then you feel so bad about some of the things you, you were doing? Raise your hand. Please raise your hand. When I say raise your hand and you are in it, raise your hand before a worse one comes to you. Yeah. You realize that you don't like yourself. You don't like this. You don't like your sin. Because in the presence of God, sin looks as it is. Evil. Then when you go out, then yourself comes again. Say, I'm going to do it again. Mercy. So when you have your quiet time every day, you come into his presence. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I just want to be where you are. How many want to be where he is? Dwelling daily in your presence. And I don't want to worship from above. From in need to where you are. How many want to be in his presence? Thank you that you've given us the privilege to know you. 
to come to you every day. Like Moses came in the mountain, Lord, early in the morning. Thank you. We can come to you early in the morning and worship you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We honor you in Jesus' name. Give us the grace to do it as we go forward into the new year. In Jesus' name, amen. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Pastor, pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my life, come into my heart. I want to be a new person. I don't want to go to hell if I die. Pray with me. Pastor, help me to know Jesus. If you are here like that, wherever you are standing, just lift your hand and I'm going to pray a special prayer as we close the service. Pastor, pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my heart. Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Lift it up high. God bless you. God bless you. Over there at the back, everywhere. Pastor, help me. I want to know God. I want to be close to God. I want Jesus to come into my life. Make me a new person. Lift it up quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if you've lifted your hand, I want you to come to me in the front. Just come from the back. Come from the side. Come from wherever you are. Come, I want to pray with you in front here. I want to be where you are. I want to be. I want to be where you are. I want to know God. Yes, my Jesus. Come, come, come to Jesus. Come to the cross. Come to God. In your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. Come on, come let me pray with you. of God. Close your eyes, all of you in front here. Lift your hands up and I'm going to pray a very special prayer as we close today. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Oh God, I come to you just as I am. Please forgive me for my sins. Please have mercy on me. Everyone join me. Say, Jesus, please wash away my sins. Please make me a new person. From today, I give my heart to God. I give my life to Jesus Christ. Oh, God, come into my heart. Make me a new person. From today, from today, I will serve God. And I will follow Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord for saving my life today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Look, God bless you for coming. This is a powerful thing that you have done and we are very excited that you came today. And if you see, look this way, you see one of our pastors is waving his hands. I want you to follow him. He's going to give you a gift, one of my books, and he'll pray with you again and then you'll come back and join us, okay? Give them a mighty clap. God bless you. Go this way, please. Oh, give them a mighty, mighty clap offering. I just want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be. Lift your hand and let's worship the Lord, everybody. I just want to be. I just want to be where you are. Give us some volume, please. Give a volume. When in day. From afar. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I want to be with you. Are. Let's sing it together. Well, it in your presence. We sing at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. done it again. We love you. We praise you. We lift our hand and we promise, Lord, in the coming year to come to you every day, to come to your presence, to come to you, Lord, on a daily basis. We know, Lord, a great blessing awaits us 
as we come daily into your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Nazareth. We thank you. Today you have shown us that if we draw nigh to you, you will also draw nigh to us. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone shouted, Amen and Amen.